So we're going to cover how to connect your call pilot 100 or 150 to your local area network to make it easier not only to manage but it gives you a few uh, user features as well that are pretty cool so your users can actually use their PCs to manage their voicemail boxes things like that okay so uh, you open it up uh, there's a, like a little tab in here so I need you to put a screwdriver in there to kind of pop that open anyway get this guy open um, it needs to be already connected to your phone system so if you're doing this as a brand new uh, installation and you haven't connected at least one of the uh, port A or B to the phone system you need to do that otherwise the some of the uh, uh, management programs won't start up okay so I've got it connected and the way you'll know too is if you see these lights over here on the edge um, you'll have like you'll have the here you got a one and a two it's kind of funny because here they're A and B and here they're one and two but anyway so A is one B is two you should have at least one of these lit all right, and then also when it's lit and it's in full operation, this middle light will be lit up right here. Kind of looks like a picture of two arrows pointing together. Now, the top one and the bottom one are the network connections. So I'm going to connect a network to this. And and having said that, it's important for you to know that if you're going to connect your initially, you need to connect just a laptop by itself to this. So um, I've got my laptop over here ready to go. And I'm going to use a rollover cable. What a rollover cable is means that one end is different from the other. It means that essentially one end is wired as a 568A, one end is wired as a 568B. Uh, to simplify the matter, just go Google the word rollover cable. If you can't get or make a rollover cable, um, you can use a switch. Just any kind of uh, Ethernet switch you could put in the middle between the two cables will work fine. All right, you can't use a plain cable. So if you try to take just a plain old regular Ethernet cable and go from here to your laptop, it's not going to work. You're not going to get link. Now, when I connect my rollover cable between my laptop and my um, and, and 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 the voicemail uh, network port, you'll see I get the all these green lights now. So I've got activity. So I'm going to stop this portion of the video. I'm going to switch over to a screen recording showing you how I'm going to get this. Uh, onto my network. Okay, be right back. Okay, we're back. So I've got my laptop connected to the Nortel Call Pilot 100 uh, with a rollover cable. Or, like I said, if you don't have a rollover cable, you should have a switch and you should have. All three of those lights in the middle of the call pilot should be lit up if you're connected properly. All right, so the first thing I need to do is change my network address on my Ethernet adapter. And the reason I need to do that is because the call pilot, if it hasn't been messed with before, or if it's a new installation, or if it's never been on the network before, is going to have a default address. And we need to match that uh, network so we can talk to it. So I'm going to go to, uh, so I'm in Windows 10, and I'm going to change my adapter options. And if you have Windows 7 or Windows XP, it's going to look a little different. The bottom line is you need to find your Ethernet adapter and go to Properties. And so this call, and so change uh, uh, your uh, TCP IP v4 address, not v6. What you need to do is specify yourself to be 192.168.110.11. Uh, and then the mask is going to be 255.255.255.0. You don't need a gateway and you don't need DNS. So the reason we're using this is because the call pilot is currently set up as 192.168.110.10. So we're, we're putting ourselves on the same network with the call pilot so we can talk to it. So we're going to save that. And if we did it successfully, we should be able to open up a uh, command prompt. Or if you don't know how to do that, just go to your little start and do uh, run and do uh, CMD. And then when you find the command prompt, just launch that. And then we're going to do a ping. Ping is a way of reaching out to another network address to find out if it's responding. 192.168.110.10. And we're getting replies. So that means that the call pilot is replying back to us saying, yep, I hear you, I see you, we're on the same network. So now we can progress to the next step. 
we're going to launch an internet browser. So um, I'm going to use Chrome. I'm not sure if Chrome works, but we'll give it a try. Some programs can be kind of picky about um, what, uh, I mean, so, some applications can be picky about what browsers they'll accept. So HTTP, so you, you're basically in the top line, you're going to go to the, the call pilot just like you're going to a website. Uh, without the W's, 192.168.1110.10. Hey, there we are. Okay, I think the password is probably just going to be four zeros. I can't remember if I changed it or not. Let's see. Oh, survey said no. Is it one, two, three, four? Let's see. I may have to stop the video and go crack this uh, password. Oh, yeah, apparently it was one, two, three, four. Okay, now I can change it. I think if you haven't changed your logon password that you use for the feature 983, um, I think it should still just be four zeros. If it's not, then you may need to. There's a. I don't know if I have a video on it, but a, there is a document around called resetting your system manager um, password for the Northstar voicemail. Okay, I'm gonna make a new password. Uh, let's see. Okay, submit so that. In order to change the address, the IP address of the call pilot from the main menu, you're going to go to um, configuration. And I know this, the type is kind of small here. Go down to where it says unit address identification. And then see this right here? So you need to make this be an IP address that's compatible with your network. So if you have a 192.168.0. Dot whatever network, then you need to choose an address that's not being used for this um, or consult your network administrator. I'm going to go with 112 because that's what I want to assign this to. I'm going to keep the mask. I'm going to go ahead and set DNS. DNS I don't think is 100% mandatory, but it's no big deal. 8888 works great. It's it's Google's um, ad, uh, Google's DNS server. For my gateway, my my network's gateway is 192.168.0.1. Okay, I'm going to submit that, and then I think I'm going to lose my. A fully qualified domain name is required. Being configured, please provide this name. Oh, okay. So it wants, it doesn't like IP addresses. Apparently, it wants a real name. So we'll skip that for now then. All right. Once you've also made that change to your um, voicemail, it's time to go back and put your adapter settings back the way they were. Don't forget to do this or you're going to feel kind of frustrated that you can't connect to your network as you had before. So remember to go back into your adapter and set your settings back to obtain automatically or whatever previous setting you have because we don't need those specialized settings anymore. Now once the voicemail comes back up, it should just be on the regular network. So I'm still waiting for mine to boot up and when it gets up, I'll test it out. Okay, so my voicemail's booted back up again. Let's give it a whirl. So I am now connected with my laptop to my regular network. And so is the, uh, the voicemail. And if I did everything right, I should be able to go to that new address. And it should, voila, there it is. And so now your voicemail is on the network, which means you should be able to access it or access it um, from any computer on the network just by putting in that address. And there are some applications that come with the call pilot. We could talk about those at another time, but there's certain applications that go with the call pilot that the users can use to uh, manage their uh, their voicemails a little more effectively. Okay, so thanks for watching. See you later.